Hi everyone, my name is Kadir Nankakarman, a graduate student at the University of Washington, supervised by Professor Steve Brockton. I'm glad to attend the second symposium on machine learning and dynamical system. Today, I will talk about our recent research project, a robust algorithm for parallel implicit sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics. I guess most of us here are interested in data-driven modeling approaches. Indeed, due to the sensor technology's rapid development, it is easier to get abundant data nowadays. Moreover, the advancement of computational hardware made it possible for developing robust data-driven algorithms. Thus, the data-driven modeling approach is becoming more and more popular. For example, in robotics, you might be interested in modeling a double pendulum and performing stabilizing control to that. In fluid dynamics, you might be interested in modeling some chemical reaction, for example, the BZ reaction. The models of the system might be quite complicated to derive by hand. That's why the data-driven modeling approach could help us directly identify those models from data and avoid the tedious work to deriving those equations by hand. In short, what we want to do is extract the models from the data directly. Many data-driven techniques can perform this modeling process, but my personal favorite is the sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics algorithm, aka Cindy. The Cindy algorithm, unlike neural networks, made it possible for us to identify sparse and interpretable models from data. This is extremely useful since we could analyze the meaning of the models we identified. Now I will briefly introduce the Cindy algorithm. In Cindy algorithm, what is given to us is the full state measurement data of the black box system. For example, the state x1 and x2 of van der Plaat oscillator. Using the full state measurement, we, what we usually have to do is approximate the derivative of the system state. Next, we could build a library that consists of various nonlinear features that includes the system's actual dynamics. We could then perform a sparse promoted least square algorithm uh, such that we could solve for a sparse vector to C, which selects a few nonlinear terms from the feature library to represent the left-hand side derivative. Finally, we could reconstruct the system's dynamic and get an interpretable models from data. By some modification of the data vectors, the Rudy et al. utilized the idea of Cindy regression and made it possible to identify the governing PDEs from the measurement data. The overall procedure is quite similar. You get the measurement data, approximate the derivatives, build up nonlinear feature libraries, perform sparse promoted regression, and solve for the sparse factor to C that selects a few nonlinear terms from the library to represent our dynamics. Once the C is solved, we could then perform the reconstruction and find out the PDE models that governs our measurement data. Although Cindy and PDE Fine are good at providing a parsimonious and interpretable model, they do have some limitations. One of them is that they are not able to identify rational or implicit dynamics. For example, suppose I give you measurement data of a rational dynamics x dot equals to minus x divided by 1 plus x, and you're required to identify this equation using Cindy. So one of the most critical questions you're going to have is how you should design your library. Remember, now we have a rational term. So as when using the original Cindy algorithm, we have to include the exact rational features to identify the correct dynamics. However, if I do not give you any information on the system we are trying to identify, you will have to make guesses. And you need to guess what kind of numerator and denominator our nonlinear features should have. This will inevitably increase the number of candidate terms in the library and resulting in a large library. This is not a good sign, since large libraries are sensitive to measurement noise during the regression process. To overcome this issue, Megan et al. developed an implicit Cindy algorithm. What implicit Cindy tries to do is rewrite the rational dynamics in the implicit form. Thus, we could transfer the problem of identifying the rational dynamics into a problem of identifying implicit equations. To do so, Megan et al. developed a new way to build our library. They allow the combination of x and x dot in the library and then tries to solve for the library matrix no space. Finally, they pick the sparse no space vector that selects a few nonlinear terms in the library to back out the implicit dynamics we're trying to identify. Once the implicit equation are found, we could then symbolically solve for the expression of x dot and thus finding the rational dynamics we desired. 
However, implicit SIND also has some limitations. Remember, one of the core steps in implicit SIND is to solve the null space of library matrix, which is extremely hard when the noise is presented, since the library matrix will be full rank and the null space will not exist. When noise is presented, an additional step must be taken to truncate the library matrix rank in order to solve the null space of library matrix. However, this process is noise sensitive. To overcome this problem, we developed a new algorithm called SINDPy. And now let me illustrate how this algorithm works. Suppose we have a rational dynamics x dot equals to 1 plus x divided by sine x. Following the idea of implicit SIND, we could transfer this rational dynamics into an implicit form. Now, it's easy to see that this implicit equation has three different non-implicit form. In other words, you could take out one of the nonlinear bases and make your implicit equation non-implicit anymore. Moreover, suppose that I told you that x dot times sine x is a part of implicit equations that we're trying to identify. And I would like you to find out the missing the, uh, pieces of the implicit equation. So what you could do is arrange x dot times sine x to the left hand side and build a library on the right hand side and perform a sparse regression to find out the missing nonlinear basis. By doing so, you could identify the dynamics x dot times sine x equals to 1 plus x without solving the null space of the library matrix. In other words, if we have prior knowledge that some nonlinear features definitely belongs to, it, to an implicit equation, then we could transfer the problem of no space solving into a sparse regression problem, which will be far more noise robust because we don't have to solve for the no space anymore. Similarly, if I told you that x is a part of this implicit equation, you could put x on the left hand side and then build a library for the right hand side. Next, perform a sparse regression and find out the missing dynamics, thus identifying the implicit equation. A similar procedure could also be made if I told you that constant term 1 also is a part of this implicit dynamics. However, let's be more realistic. Since for most of the time, we don't know what kind of basis the implicit equation definitely have. So what should we do now? Well, the solution is actually quite easy. If you don't have any prior knowledge, why don't you make a guess? To do so, let's build a library for our right-hand side and left-hand side. We could form a sparse regression problem for each term in our left-hand side library. For example, we could take out term one from the left-hand side library and form a sparse regression problem. To avoid the trivial solution such as one equals to one, we have to get rid of term one from our right-hand side library. And now, since term one is a part of the implicit dynamics, when we perform the sparse regression, we are going to have a sparse model, which is really accurate on the testing data. Next, let's test the term x and put it to the left hand side and form a new sparse regression problem. As before, we get rid of the term x from the right hand side library to get rid of the trivial solution. We could then perform a sparse regression. And since x is part of this implicit dynamics, we're going to find out and sparse an accurate model. Now we could test term x squared. Remember term x squared is not a part of this implicit dynamics. Thus, when you're performing the sparse regression, you're not going to have a good model. And the remaining procedure is basically the same. We all we have to do is test out each terms individually from the left hand side library and form a new sparse regression problem to have candidate models. We could see this testing procedure is highly parallelizable since each sparse regression problem is independent. Thus, we could use computational toolbox to speed up this computation process. And that's why we called it SINDPy, where PI stands for parallel and implicit. By the previous animation, we could see that you're more likely to generate a sparse model with low prediction error on the test data when you made a correct guess. On the contrary, you will end up with a dense model with high prediction error on the test data when you made a wrong guess. This can be used as our model selection criteria. 
Moreover, we could rewrite the previous individual sparse regression problem and form a constrained optimization problem that tests all the candidate terms at once. As a simple example to further illustrate the Cindy pi, let's look at the michaelis menten dynamics. We could write this rational dynamics in an implicit form and solve multiple sparse regression problems using Cindy pi. When we choose our left-hand side as x times x dot, we could have a sparse model after sparse regression. When we test the term x dot times sine x, we will end up with a dense model. After examining their performance on the test data, we could see that the sparse model is orders of magnitude more accurate than the dense one. We could then pick the sparse and accurate model as our final model and symbolically solve for x dot, which will result the correct rational dynamics we wish to identify. By using Cindy Pi, we could see a huge noise robustness improvement when compared with previous implicit Cindy. For example, when we generate our noise derivative by adding a Gaussian noise, we could see up to 200 times more noise robustness improvement. Moreover, the Cindy Pi also needs less training data than implicit Cindy to identify the correct dynamics. For example, Cindy Pi could use up to 12 times fewer data points than implicit Cindy to identify the yeast glycolysis model correctly. With this improved performance, it is now possible to use Cindy Pi to solve rational PDEs. For example, we compare the performance of Cindy Pi and PDE fine on the modified KDV equation. When the value of G0 is zero, both Cindy Pi and PDE fine can identify the correct dynamics. However, when we increase the value of G0, the rational dynamics will play a central role and PDU find will fail to generate the correct models. For example, when G0 is small, the PDU find will add a constant term to the final model to compensate for the rational dynamics. When the value of G0 is too large, the PDU find starts to overfit the library and cannot identify the correct models. Thus, the Cindy Pi is better at handling the rational PDEs than PDE find. That's why we can now use Cindy Pi to identify rational PDEs that are previously prohibited. For example, the simplified model of Bezu reaction. The simplified model of Bezu reaction has a really interesting rational form. This rational form can be identified easily by using Cindy Pi. We can simulate the simplified model of Bezu reaction and provide the training and testing data to Cindy Pi and we could find out it will generate the correct model that represents the dynamics of the simplified Bz reaction. When we simulate the identified model by Cindy Pi, it matches really well with the ground truth. The Cindy Pi can now also be used to identify some complicated rational ODEs. For example, the equation of motion of double pendulum. Although the double pendulum looks like an easy system to identify, its equation of motion actually has really complicated rational form. However, when the library is built correctly, the Cindy Pi can now identify the equation of motion of double pendulum with certain noise robustness. If the system you're interested in is driven by control input, the Cindy Pi could also be used to identify their equation of motion. For example, we could include the effect of control in our nonlinear features and use Cindy Pi to identify the correct model. But more interestingly, we could now have the ability to extract physical laws from data. Many physical laws have an implicit form, for example, the Euler-Lagrangian equation. If we build our library correctly, the Cindy Pi could extract this information from the measurement data directly. And again, we could illustrate this using a double pendulum as an example. In summary, we developed a new algorithm that can tackle the implicit or fractional dynamics parallelly. It is more noise robust and requires less training data than previous state-of-the-art implicit Cindy algorithm. Moreover, it has the potential to identify the physical laws from data. Please feel free to check out our paper and the GitHub code if you want to know more about our approach. With that, I would like to thank my collaborator, Professor Steve Broughton and Professor Nisa Kutz, and thank you all for listening.